All right, so probably what a lot of people probably wanted to hear on this show. Uh, last week, Wall Street Journal reported that Alex Cooper, a caller daddy, was going to Spotify. It looks like today that was made official. Yeah, and uh, that report. So we knew this coming. I'm very happy with the way this deal went down. Um, you know, the reports, and I don't know the exact amounts. I actually asked Alex. I'm like, do you want to come on this show? She's like, yeah, I just don't want to talk about the specific amounts I'm getting paid. Well, it's like, I don't know that that's weird to me to have you on and not ask that question. So it's like, you don't have to come on. I can just tell it from my perspective. She had her podcast. Erica's had hers. But, you know, we we wanted to keep her. Clearly, she's a monster. Um, and for that reason that she's a monster, she got big offers from Spotify. And I, the rumors are $20 million. I believe that's per year. That's like $20 million a year. For what three years, I believe something in that neighborhood. I don't have the exact facts. Close to 60 million. Okay, so close to sixty million for three. Yeah, yeah. Well, it didn't say the year. It just said a deal close to sixty million. Yeah, and I've heard twenty, million. so I think that's what I believe it was to be. I believe Alex would have taken a discount, a hometown discount, to stay with us. Um, she would have. It was a lot, and she has agents, and rightfully so. And the agents are tough, and, and a lot of it, I think, is guaranteed, like up front, and, but the same amount. And my thing on it, I know how much we made before. We would have had to play perfectly in a way, in my mind, to, to warrant that much money, right? We would have had to be sold out, and, the, and Call Her Daddy would have been killing it. And we know how much we made before. And I said to Alex – Clearly, it's like, listen, we're so hands off with you. Like, we don't talk that much. You do you. And if you want to skip an episode or you want to have that, like, we're never in your ass about it. If we do a contract like this, I, we're going to have to be in your ass about it. It's so much money. It's like, hey, you got to do this ad. You can do it. It's like, I, I don't want to be in that position. And it's like, she didn't really either. She got it. So we tried to work something out. And I think that was the right deal for her. Spotify, it, it always helps more the company that you're going to because you're bringing audience over, right? Like we already have the audience. And to be honest, I feel like Call Her Daddy and Barstool are so closely aligned. The people who she introduced to us already know who we are. And if people continue, but it's like we weren't doing that much. So yeah, I would have liked to keep her. But again, we would have had to play perfectly for 30 years to like justify that. And, I, and it was a huge risk. Where I think we really got what I love is we're still doing all the Call Her Daddy merch. So, and she did a deal that I think was in our favor. Like, again, the agents, agents, these are big time agents, the same people, rep, athletes, stars, she's in that level. And they really wanted to guarantee on the merch too. And it's like, we can't because it's like, if we give it, it's the only person who can move merch is Alex. She decides. So Alex was like, I still want to be aligned with you guys. And she really relented on any sort of guarantee. And, and so it's like a rev share in her favor and we'll continue to all the merch. To me, that's where a lot of the money is anyways. And we'll continue to do that. We're going to have a project that her and I are in Barstool are working on. So it really, I'm very happy with the way it came out. And even going back, this is the nature of the beast. You sign somebody who is unknown. She explodes. It's no different than an athlete contract. After three years, now obviously got Harry who only had that blow up. She was always going to make millions. She was that big. She has like Rogan-esque numbers. So um, that's how it ended up. But I wouldn't say, you know, it's the opposite of what happened a year or a year and a half ago when we had that whole blow up. This time we're fair. I get it. I understand the world. And I think she was actually thankful that we helped her and the relationship was mended and really didn't want to totally jump off the Barstool ship. Like I said, I think she would have taken a hometown discount, but it's still so much fucking money for us. Yeah, she can't pass that up. Nope. I think she got. I think she made a very good deal. And I even said to her, like the, doing that long of a deal, I don't know what Alex Cooper is going to want in two years. She may get approached to be a star in a movie or whatever. Who fucking knows? And we've guaranteed all this money with the podcast. Who knows? She's a star. 
and she de deserves every penny that she's getting. And I'm, you know, happy for her. There's no animosity. And like I said, I like still having the merch, being involved in it. Uh, but that's how this business works. Are you saying that Barcel is willing or could have come somewhat close to that, though? Sure. Yes. But I mean, and you're not but worried. It, 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 not to make money. Like again, maybe we make a little. It's in a lot of ways. Once you have any star, it almost gets to the point in a weird way where there's such little margin to make anything on it because the agents are driving up the things. You know. Do you think Spotify is doing kind of what like a DraftKings is doing in the game? Yes. They just like throw. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Spotify's throwing money around. And, and I don't think they necessarily are going to look at her and be like, oh, we turned a profit or we didn't. They're just building audience, building audience, building audience, competing versus Apple, that type of thing. Um, so, yeah, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. So it's two, it's two companies in different areas. Like We would want to turn a profit on Call Her Daddy, whereas they're just trying to gain people to listen on Spotify to her, Rogan, Simmons. Yeah, and maybe they think they can turn a profit. I don't know. Uh for us, we look at a lot of different things. And, and again, it's a huge difference when the, the, the company that's acquiring who didn't have the talent is always going to benefit more than the company that already had it in terms of building audience. Like, was Alex going to bring us a ton of new audience over the next three years? Probably not. She probably already brought the majority of her audience whether they like us or not, they know about us. Spotify is totally different. It's a new, they're bringing it over. So as of right now, what changes is her podcast page and everything will be pulled off. It'll be off Apple. And so pretty much she'll just have like a merch page in the store. Yeah, is all the merch all, will all still come through on? like our store. Yeah. We're okay. like building or like a special store too, yeah. like a better looking store and all that stuff. And the newsletter, there's a newsletter. Newsletter. Thing. I think we're sending people out to have our own like merch team because she can kill it with that. Again, I was very very happy with the deal like i wanted to keep her clearly i knew it was gonna be a lot and a part of me was like uh like she was being flexible to come back and we're trying to get there but it's still so much money and and we just went back to this is what we do like let's be smart about it and i think we made this the right decision and again i am pretty happy with the way this all shook out and we're going to closely work with her with the merch and an unnamed project that will hopefully be out within the next year or so what's a uh, what's the newsletter do exactly i, I don't know really. that was yeah, no, I mean, newsletter is a big thing that you can, like, own, it's a way to get own audience. Like a call her like daddy you, newsletter. Yeah, and you can advertise in it. There's a lot of, in the financial world, newsletters just are a revenue driver. Direct line to their email. This is how thing. every deal should end. You fulfill the contract. Like, it, I'd use her as an example, minus the part when everything went haywire. This is what Barcel can do. We can create a platform. You sign a contract. At the end of the contract, you're a huge star. If we can resign you, great. If we can't, you get a better offer. Congratulations. Go get your bag. Like that is that's how it should work. Where it gets hairy is when you don't fulfill the contract. It's like that's why we signed you. We got to get our worth out of that time. And it's almost, it's kind of groundbreaking in a way too because I feel like this is the first one that's gone on good terms. Uh, like McAfee was good terms, but there was still no, an McAfee, issue before McAfee it happened. McAfee wasn't good terms but no. McAfee it wasn't because of that because McAfee was kind of at will and doing his own thing but I mean there was animosity not between me but it was like the business side and there was some you know bubbly gang shit that it, that was a little cloudy but you know tall mo he went on to success yeah but I'm saying to that stratosphere like to me there's three it's Pat Alex and Jenna um so, and I don't know how. And Jenna is a Jenna. weird one because that was not, that was not, the animosity on that wasn't that she was leaving and going on to do something because I actually read her contract that she was signing in LA and gave her feedback like, yeah, make sure this. So I was like, yep, go do your thing. It And I was fine with her right up till she basically, in my mind, was gave us no credit for her success. It wasn't that she was leaving. 
And that's just me being and, like, I guess, a little petty. But it's like, what the fuck? I felt like she manipulated that story to like take her next step when it should have been like, thanks, Barstool. Had a great time. Without you, I wouldn't be here. And we'd be like, fine. And then I think something a lot of people are confused on as well is because when you guys left, when, when Sophia was out and everything, there was a 50-50 Barstool Alex deal. So did Barstool get 50% of nope. this money or how nope. does that? And there was okay. deal. And again, we're like, like we're, the truth of the matter is call her daddy is her. Like, can you do it without her? No. They're, like her old guys tried to get rid of the two of them. Mouge at one point tried to like he's like just get rid of both of them and I'll create a new one without them um but I never really thought you'd be able to do that he did but I didn't think that's her thing it was 50 50 if she stopped I believe like doing the podcast and just licensed it out to somebody else and had nothing to do with it we would get 50 percent of that but she's still doing it so you we pretty much relinquished that. I think it's still in the contract, but we still have the merch. A lot of it was like merch based. If she licensed call her daddy to like, I don't know, Urban Outfitters and they're just doing the merch, like we would have gotten fifty percent of that, I think. But again, I wasn't overly stringent on that. I it's people can say what they want about me. I am fair. Like Alex made this company a ton of fucking money over the last three years. A ton. And I'm not gonna like hold people necessarily hostage who do that if I think everybody's been like fair and pulled their weight. Eddie, what do you think the the vibe is in time? You're, you're an employee here. Like I am like, do, what do you think other podcasters? What do you, what do you think when you see like these numbers and like how all this goes down? So I, I think two things. I, I think one, I, I wonder how it affects the, the trajectory of Barstool because as we talked about before, she did so well. They sold so much merchandise that I don't know. A lot of people were eating from yeah, her. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. From her table. Like, yeah. Shit. Well, we right? still have so, the so merch. So should people be worried? We still have the merch. I yeah. mean, it definitely affects, so that, I guess, a little. Like Erica, for sure, is like looking more now at bloated salaries or anything like that. Um, did you mean like? That they think they're underpaid. They're, I mean, I, I wouldn't. We have other top podcasts here. They see like you know, kicking the tires. I don't know. Yeah, it. it, it, it there, She's it, a unique person. There is no yeah. other call her daddy at this company for a variety of reasons. It it's huge and it's unique, and nobody does numbers and merch or anything remotely similar to what she did. Um, and the market is what the market is. Like we. we a lot of our top people have agents, right? So it, they know the market. Nobody was, they, there's, she got what she got because she is a unique unicorn that there's really nobody else quite like it out there. So if the agents, other agents for other people could get that, they would, but there is no other Alex Cooper. Yeah, but I would say there's definitely a sense of people could maybe get more, right? If they, I mean, an agent would help you out do that, but there is, if someone wanted to and they wanted to ask for top dollar, but they were still like a, a big bar stool grandfathered in person, like, is that, is that, are you fine with that? Is there a precedent there? Or I don't know that we have people who fall into that category, to be honest. I feel as if grandfathered, not grandfathered, most of the top people here have representation and agents do not give a fuck. They go for top dollar. And then you say that too, Paul. The other thing that makes me think you you have been very generous with the IP. I think you gave uh, throwing fits or what was their name when they were here? Failing yep. upwards. I think you gave it to them. I think you gave it to Nadu. It sounds you just gave it to Alex. So I gave. I don't it know. Even like, to Jenna Marvels back in the day. Yeah. I, I, so am I don't know the precedent. Not a good negotiator. I am not like uh, let me grind the person. If you pull your weight, I will be more than fair with you. To the end. I'm not like I I am fair. I people may not think that, but I really am. It's probably why I blow up and get so mad when I feel like people fuck us over. Is a replacement pod being looked for now? No. No, there's not like a women sex kind of thing that we didn't look for that. That found us. We never look for anything. Things find us. But that's not something that you can just replace, I don't think. If we find somebody who's unique and good and interesting, sure. And then, so you, you've kind of had a hunch for a while, right? Like, when, when did you, up until when did you think we were going to get her back? Or where, where you kind of, 
wishful thinking almost, it felt like. I, I really didn't know. I believe she wanted to come back. Like, if she could have had her druthers and said, I'm around the same structure, money-wise, guarantee-wise, everything like that, I be- I think she would have been like, yeah, I'm going to stay with Barstool. I'm happy here. They let me do whatever they want. But again, it, it, we're at different stages. It's... um. You know, we're going to have other contracts coming up that we got to look at. And, again, I've said a million, it's like a sports team. And, and for we are gambling-focused now, so that's probably not – she's not going to be, like, super helpful with that. Uh, but a lot of different factors. I was very comfortable with the way it shook out. But I knew for I probably a couple I mean- months that I, it probably wasn't going to keep the podcast here. So how <laughs> – I mean, how big of a mistake was made when the breakup happened, if you look at it from this perspective now? By, I, I don't even like talking about it because then she's going to say, like, I'm assaulting girls and whatnot. Um, by Sophia, she fucked up, clearly. I mean, how can you not right. look at it? I, I mean, mean th- it, it will go down, and I knew it in real time when they didn't take the deal in real time, the deal that I offered them when they both would have been multi, 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 multi millionaires in like eight months. And they, and they originally said, no, I was like, what do you mean? No. Like, I just, you just got offered the best deal in the history of deals. What do you mean? No, I I don't even know what to say that. And that is when Alex came back, she's like, yeah, I don't know why we're saying no, I want your, I get it. Like, yeah, I'm in, but you know, Sophia's not going to be in, but crazy. It'll go down. It's a decision. I, you know, I always thought Sophia liked me. She clearly hates me, but I, I – not a good decision. What a ride it's been, man. Even since the beginning, I think it was 2019, maybe late 2018, you know, they were they were, they were kind of dominating you in a way that no apl- employee really has. And you really kind of had to take it because they did well. And uh, I don't know, you, you caught a lot of shit on like Barstool Radio and whatnot for them allowing – you know, you allowing them. Well, to there was like, the, and- you know, there was a sequence of events where it was kind of a, a give and take. And I still felt like if I asked them to do something, they do it. They showed up to like the um, field day and things like field that. And I thought I had a pretty good relationship with them and we did let them do their own thing because they were killing it. And then things turned very self uh, and I just was quiet about it. I wasn't really saying much. And that was the business side of me having to shut my mouth and kind of eat it for a bit. Which was hard to do. I don't like doing that, but had to do it. Well, it's quite the era. The caller daddy era is over. So, well, kind of. The merch no, is still Yeah, here. I mean, she's still tied in. The merch, to me, the merch is like, if you said, hey, you can pick merch or pod, I would say, give me the merch. Honest to God. So that's why I'm happy with it. Would it be different if we had to grow audience and things like that? Yeah, but we'll lose that audience. But again, people who know us know us. Call Her Daddy for sure introduced us to a whole new thing. And ironically, their fight when I did the podcast where I hijacked their stream, now that's the best thing that happened because I was introduced myself to their people. That was like maybe their most listened to episode or one of them. Because it was so out of the blue. So all the Caller Daddy fans who really didn't know what Barstool was or who I was got introduced to me. And they've been able to make their decision. Yep, we like Dave. We like Barstool. We'll follow him. So the people from the Caller Daddy crowd who have made their decision. And I can already reach them regardless if it's on Spotify or not. They've decided, yeah, we like Dave. We fuck with Dave. We fuck with Barstool. And we'll still be able to reach them. So that's actually a good question. That do we have? Do we have their feed still? Like hypothetically, if something no. were to move no, in no. there, you kind of no. Get that's those. gone. Feeds theirs. Hers. No, but do you, oh, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Though? No, we can't do that. It's it's gone. It's it's no. Spotify's. Like that day, okay. I hopped on the feed. No, I could not do that right now if I want to. Okay. All right. Um, well, all right. Call her daddy. We'll we'll see how everything shakes out. Good luck to Alex. Good so luck. It's a truly. That and PMT are two podcasts that, like, were culturally important in the world of podcasting and kind of social media and all that, really. 